This is Dream Power Radio, the place where your dreams turn into reality. Here is your host, Debbie Specter Weissman. Hello and welcome, welcome, welcome to Dream Power Radio on the amazing Women and Men of Power Network, the world's leading positive programming network powered by Raven International. I'm your host, Debbie Specter Weissman, the Dream Coach. This is the show where we talk about dreams, both daytime and nighttime dreams, and how you can use them to make the internal shift to a life you love. And as a reminder, I'm also here to help you understand your dreams. So if you've got a dream that's got you stumped, email me at debbie at dreampowerradio.com. I'll help you understand your dream or answer any questions you might have about dreams. And who knows, you may even be featured on one of my future shows. So again, send me your dreams to Debbie at DreamPowerRadio.com. Well, you know, our, I believe our dreams provide us with invaluable insights into our problems and possibilities. But I have to admit, it's not the only way to gain a deeper understanding of your life. That's why I'm thrilled to have astrologer, neurologist, author, and speaker Sharita Starr join us today. Sharita sees patterns of energy and cycles through the three star secrets of astrology, numerology, and lexigrams. Coined as a psychic of the planets, Sharita distinctly sees how our names and birthdays hold our keys to success. The founder of Sharita's Star Secrets, Sharita also empowers souls to understand the benefits of our natural cycles of reflection through her one-of-a-kind Mastering Mercury Retrograde workshops and teleseminars. Her Empower Scopes offer distinct timing in everything advice. Her application, Astrology Numerology Wheel, is available on iTunes, and her breakthrough book on lexigrams it's all in the name, shows how we can spell out the truth from our words, names, and titles. So welcome to Dream Power Radio, Sharita. Thank you so much, Debbie. It's an honor to be here with you and your listeners. Thank you again. Oh, great. Thank you. You know, it might take a whole program for you to answer this, but generally speaking, how do you- <laughs> How do you use all of your knowledge to inform people about their lives? Well, my, uh, you know, my, I guess my uh, motto in life is uh, that timing is everything, first and foremost. But um, if we want to gain a, a really good bird's eye view of how to, uh, work in our lives. And I so agree with, you know, what you said, um, you just, you know, said about how dreams are an amazing way, a nighttime dream, uh, especially is such an amazing tool that we have to, you know, kind of pick apart and analyze and figure out, well, what does it really mean? And we have this same exact guidance in a different, uh, you know, it's kind of being tuned in on a different channel. But um, our names and our birthdays hold our keys to success. Um, And we can always align our peace of mind during changing times because of the fact that we own a name and we own a birthday. And it is astounding what you can start to understand, not only about who you are, why did you come here uh, back in incarnated form, human form again. Well, I guess that would be another topic for discussion if you believe it's again. (laughs) I know I've been here many times before in other bodies, but um, I know not everyone's open to that. But uh, there's really not many questions that cannot be answered by how astrology, numerology, and lexigrams connectively work together in your life. Well, that is a... a I'm glad you're able to do that so succinctly and not take hours and hours to explain it all. But <laughs> it is very true. No, and and uh, I can take hours and hours to explain it all, but then we'd probably be bored. But 
But no, it, it, you know, we have, um, it's a gift to be able to recognize that your name and your birthday are only here to support you with like your own self-knowledge. It's a map, um, again, for who you are and why did you come here, but it's also the map of how to work and circulate in life and um, understand why cycles are in play. Um, because there's always a cycle, there's many overlapping cycles in your life all the time. Um, so we need to know, you know, we have short-term ones, long-term ones, and, and they all mix together and are asking us to, to give different applied focus. Um, you know, it's kind of like if we want result B, but we keep walking up path A, well, we're not going to get there, would we? So that's where all of these things, when you're looking at how the connectivity of astrology, numerology, and lexicons work, they're all, and there's this unison going on with them all the time, um, which is how I was taught to do what I do, is you can't look at one without all the other stuff alongside of it, or you're missing part of your equation. Because everything's really just mathematical with what this all is. It's doing a little math and then it's interpreting it in a very insightful and even psychological way for people. Um, but that's really what astrology, numerology, and lexagrams is all about. It's, it's all about the math and the quantum of this universe, but how that quantum is personally affecting you. So I really work a lot with um, teaching people the law of attraction and uh, you know, working with things that um, you're in charge of all this stuff. You've got free will. <laughs> and that's the most wonderful thing to be empowered with, is to know your free will is always in charge. Yes, indeed. But so it really, really makes a big difference whether you are born uh, at 11.59 p.m. versus 12.01 a.m. the following day. Uh, it, absolutely. Um, it's a great example, Debbie, actually, um, because not only would um, your number would switch, number one, the day of the month you're born on would automatically switch, even in that small fraction of time passing. Um, but twins is there, it would be another way to look at it because, you know, they're, they're born very close together, but their math in the chart is very obviously quite similar, but the time difference is going to set the chart up a little different. It, it's not a huge difference, but it does make, you know, um, like somebody like twins are, are why are they still their own individual? Um, and that would also be involving like how their name uh, is their, their, their names are different. Obviously the first names. Um, but uh, with somebody born at, you know, yeah, 1159 on one day or 1201 a.m. on the next, um, you're going to get a totally different karmic path with that, um, which from the numerology will shift many things. Um, it will shift not only your karmic path, which um, is all about your personality, talents, um, things relating to your health, uh, you know, all kinds of immediate things that you want to know about your life. Um, but it's also going to alter your life path because the, the math is going to work out a little differently if you're born one day or if you're born the next day. Um, that's why I love like, you know, when I hear, you know, uh, a, a woman is become pregnant and they go, oh, it's due on this day. And <laughs> just never sure. <laughs> you, know, you, you could plan all you want for that day, but that's rarely the time that a baby ever arrives is on the due date. It's, it's like, you know, the people choose to come here when they know the, the gateway is open. And that's a lot, that alignment of the astrology, the numerology and the name that the parents, that they kind of guide the parents to give them. That is how they're going to live out this intended life, you know, through that energy. And that's how everything falls out. Yeah. I, I can tell you that from experience. I went into labor with my son on the night of uh, July 28th, but he wasn't born until the morning of July 29th. So there you go. He Maybe. wanted to be a little more emotional. <laughs> yes, but he's still Leo. Nevertheless, he's like a chicken soup. He's a chicken soup for everybody. He, he's your son is like the chicken soup for everybody's soul. He's got that real nurturing instinct about him. 
Ah, uh, you can tell that. <laughs> yes. Um, Knowing he's born on the 29th, absolutely. And of course, he's a Leo, so he's everything he does in his life is about if his heart's not into it, he won't do it. Uh, this is so or true. <laughs> if he gets if he gets stuck doing something, he really gets like not he's not a happy camper if he's stuck doing something his heart's not into. So he always really needs to follow his heart in his life. And who doesn't? What sign doesn't? But um, a Leo especially needs to, to to really be careful about where their heart is because if it's in the wrong place, it's not going to do them very. It's not going to serve their highest good. Let's put it that way. So, were you just talking on the phone with him yesterday? <laughs> because uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I will also add to that he's in a very like now that you told me his birthday, it's like it's, 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 I'm tapped in. So he um he also very much is uh, in a year in his life where he's figuring himself out emotionally in a way that he hasn't done in a really long time. So um, he is going through some soul searching this year um, and coming into his own realignment. Mm -hmm. So that is part of what he's up to. And he's really been the strongest in that since his birthday last year. Um, and will continue to do that through the summer. But he's really heading into this abundant year coming up. But he, he's very, very, um, he should really pay attention to how the eclipses are working for him. Um, because it's a lunar guided year that he's in via the numbers. So the really noting what's going on with the moon is very important to see where he wants to make changes the most. And of course we just had a really powerful um, solar eclipse in Capricorn to start the year, which of course is part of the reason why this 2019 energy has shifted into like, let's hit the ground running and let's get going. But we've got to be very diligent and responsible to what we need to get, what we need to do. Um, it's like people who want to cast off a lazy energy this year will not be very well supported. And people all as well need to be very reachable and very teachable mm -hmm. um, yeah, in order to, to attain what they want. Yeah, I want you to delve in a little bit to this whole idea that you have that this is the year for everyone to be reachable and teachable. So explain a little bit more. Yes. Well, we've come out of a deep healing year. 2018 was just kind of get everybody into the, well, why did all that happen in 2018? Uh, 2018 was a heavy year. It was not light for anyone. Um, and not to say that life was like just not good, but there was a lot of healing, releasing, letting go, clearing out that karmic stuff um, that we don't need um, anymore. You know, again, getting in touch with our own emotional balance within our life was a huge universal calling in 2018 and I had coined the year feeling the feminine um, because it was also a lunar guided year which is why everything was so intense across the board and it doesn't matter if you're an American or if you were living in France or Thailand or wherever life is intense on this was very intense on this planet on an emotional level last year um, and we were all asked to dive in to this calling of feeling the feminine in some way, shape, or form in our life, whether we needed to nurture ourselves better, nurture the people in our life better, whatever, however it personally, you know, worked for you is what was really meant to be paid attention to. So we've, if, if we stepped up and did that work, which was not easy, you know, 2018 did not fall easy for most people. Um, we had, aside from the new, how the numerology was, 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 um, channeling we had a all year long we had interplanet retrogrades practically there was only like I would say a, a third of the year was spent out of interplanet retrograde activity which is not that common um, we had two very long passages besides all the way the mercury retrogrades always go out um, we had an interplanet reflection from Mars which encapsulated our entire summer last year and then we had another one in the fall from Venus. So we were just, 
it was one after another, and it felt like we had no break or we couldn't put our foot on the gas last year. And we weren't supposed to be because you can't put your foot on the gas when you're trying to heal. You're, 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 not, you're not moving forward when you're healing. You're, you're, you're allowing yourself to rest and have that downtime. So if we did all that work last year, then this is the year where remaining in that space of I'm taking all of that work I did and I'm recognizing and I'm being very reachable to see it this way now, what it taught me about my life. What, what did it teach me? And what am I still like here to learn? I'm, we all need to realize we are a student in, this, in, the, in 19. And if we're allowing ourselves to be taught, we will accelerate at a rate this year that will be astounding. But if we want to be in a know-it-all or I don't want to deal with that attitude, I, I cannot say that that's going to support anybody well this year. Know-it-alls are not well supported in 2019. Um, we really want to open up our, our energy to see what it is that allows us growth and to know that growth is possible to stop looking at the glass like it's half empty and how that is it half full. Right. So that's where we want to sit. Right. So all of this gives us the guidance of where we can go, but it's up to us to actually take action on what these signs are telling us. Uh, But with that, we're going to. Absolutely. Uh, we're going to take a short break here. Uh, we're talking with astrologer and numerologist Sharita Starr on Dream Power Radio. We'll be right back. What could be more dreamy than a cruise to the mysterious and exotic Cuba? Join me in June for a luxurious eight-night trip on Royal Caribbean's Empress of the Seas. We'll taste the cuisine in Havana, dance to the music in the enchanting cities of Sinfuegos and Santiago de Cuba, and much more. For more information and to sign up for this unforgettable trip, email me at Debbie at DreamPowerRadio.com. Welcome back to Dream Power Radio with your host, Debbie Specter Weissman. Yes, and welcome back to Dream Power Radio. I'm your host, certified Dream Life Coach, Debbie Specter Weissman. And we're speaking with astrologer and numerologist Sharita Starr. Sharita, your book, All in the Name, talks about how a person's name can affect all aspects of their life. And I don't know if you're aware of this, but I use the name Debbie Specter Weissman because of you. Uh, A number of years ago, you you did my chart. And at the time, I was just using Debbie Weissman. And one of the conclusions was that that name, Debbie Weissman, wasn't as powerful as using a three word name in my life. So mm-hmm. since then yeah. I started using Debbie Specter Weissman because Specter is my maiden name. I always liked it. So, you know, I liked it yeah. better than I liked my given middle name. <laughs> so I used Debbie Specter Weissman and, you know, quite a few good things happened since then. Uh, it was after that, that I discovered the power of dreams and, you know, studied and yeah. became a dream life coach. I also conquered a several decades long writer's block. And since then I've either wrote, co-wrote, or have been a contributing author to nine books. Uh, So that's been my story with this, but do you have any other examples of people whose lives were transformed by listening to uh, the meaning of their names? Did we talk about this? Because, you know, your name spells, um, a, you, it spells a wise dream fear. Did we do that with your lexagram? We did. We did. <laughs> yes, there, there were quite a few. I think did. that's obviously why you're, you know, and I, 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 off the top of my head, I do not remember what the difference of your, um, because this is such a great uh, point to bring up as well, is that how you legally choose to spell your name and how it is um, documented and seen by the public and energized through your bank statements and uh, your license, your forms of identification, so on and so forth. Um, There's an energetic um, 
thing that go, comes through with a name via numerology, which is what the name expression is. And yes, I do remember, like I said, I don't remember the difference in the, in, in the, in the numbers that's off the top of my head. Um, but yes, the Debbie Wiseman uh, versus Debbie Specter Wiseman is, yes, there's more power in the number that you've got. So how the, the one thing we can't change is our birthday. You know, that is like decided in the, the heavens above how we want to come back here. You, you're never going to change your birthday. You can't like send it back and get another one, right? But we can tweak a name. And that's, um, although we can never ignore the, the given name, we always have to like, kind of keep that. But whatever we have our name is, the legal, current, present vibration is extremely important to understand because it, it affects your career in public life, how your name is spelled. Um, so you want to use the spelling that is going to enhance, A, what you want to do, um, attract what you want to do, and support what you want to do. Um, you don't want a vibration that's going to be bringing in all kinds of like, but some vibrations just aren't as happy as others um, in numerology. That's one thing Chaldean numerology that I do consult with uh, teaches us the most um, is that you know, we have to be very aware and mindful of, of how we are casting things. Again, we can't see this. It's not like we can see a name vibration, but we can certainly um, feel its effects in an un... We, we can't tangibly touch it, but the energy is underlying all the time. So we have to... Um, we've got to work with that. Um, as far as other people, oh my goodness, the examples, I could go on and on. So Judy Garland is a great example. Um, now she was a woman who obviously was not born to the name Judy Garland at all. She completely had a different name on stage. Um, her real name is Frances Ethel Gum. That was her birth name. And even though nobody knew that on stage um, or knew that through movies with her, um, they always knew her as Judy Garland, but it is the Judy Garland name, uh, sorry, it is the Francis Ethel Gum name that tells us this from Lexagrams alone is, um, sent as a mega MGM star as a teen, teenager can be spelled from her name. And I'm taking the anagram that I can derive. And the art of the Lexagram is phrasing those anagrams like poetry or prose. And it spells out the story, like how I said, is a wise dream seer from your name, from your full name that we, we were looking at. Um, and obviously that this is here you are and this is what you're, you're doing, um, carrying this name energy. Um, so Judy's uh, born given name is also uh, spells out, um, can act near three men. And of course in The Wizard of Oz, that was her claim to fame and that's what got her going. Um, was acting near the lion, the cowardly lion, and uh, can last as an eternal star comes out of her name, which who is, who is, we still know who Judy Garland is to this day, but was what the sad part about Judy's story was that and I remember the name Judy Garland is the sacrifice to victim for her, and that is, is the vibration of it, and she also, from the Francis Ethel Gum name, you could spell out the story as well. MGM regulates her. And she was put on diet pills during the filming of, of The Wizard of Oz to um, regulate her weight. And then that started her on a, that journey of being addictive when she was too young to, like, kind of not be monitored correctly. And... Um, then she ended up obviously having the troubles that she did. Um, and it really allowed her to be in that sacrifice. She ended up sacrificing of herself because of the addictions in her life. And um, that could have been avoided. But the story was there. And, um, you know, back then, you know, none of that was monitored like it is now. Or, you know, there, was no, there wasn't as much awareness about it. But let's put it that way. Um, so, but she came here and she did what she did. Um, but Judy Garland as a stage name for her was, it didn't give her the best energy. Um, 
had she ever had a numerologist, uh, she should have tweaked that a little bit. <laughs> um, it may have supported her differently had she had a different name, and maybe that would have not gone into her career. The addiction wouldn't have followed her, which it did around her entire career from what MGM started her with, you know, by, reg by putting her on diet pills she didn't need to be on. Right. Well, it's too bad you weren't around when she was coming up with her name. I was around somewhere. I don't know. I think I was, um, I was definitely in another life at the time, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, how did you discover the power of our names? Well, how my uh, journey began when I discovered Linda Goodman. And I discovered her, I was at a new, I was working with a, a new age music company um, about almost that was many years ago now, uh, around the turn of the century, as <laughs> it were at the time. And uh, I came across her star cards that were made after she had published um, Star Signs. And I saw these cards and that the book Star Signs that she wrote had been given to me in my twenties and I kind of thumbed through it a little bit, but I didn't, and I always had a draw to, you know, astrology and tarot and, and all the little divination things. But I, at the time I was in my twenties, I was working in the restaurant industry and I just was not, you know, I wasn't seeking some career change at the time, but I had also worked with this new age music company and we were at this new age trade show and I saw these cards but it triggered me like a voice in my head was so strong and said, you've got to go home and get that book. You, you've got to read that book. So I dug the, the star signs out of my library and I just started reading it. Like I really read it and I read it cover to cover. And that was, that was it. <laughs> that was it. That book changed my life. Uh, and she talks in, in, in this book about the connectivity of astrology, numerology, and lexigrams, and there's you, you, how this works. And it was like somebody, Debbie, turned on a light switch for me. I, I, that's all how, I, it's the only way I could explain it. I read this book, and it was like I just started having all this information <laughs> that I didn't realize I had any connectivity to. And she says in the book, do not take my word for any of this. Just apply it. Apply it to people you know. And I realized at that moment as well, I had never forgotten anybody's birthday that I had known who had ever really been close to me on some level. So I started like analyzing people and I was like, oh my God, yeah, that describes them. And, you know, she, she tells you how to put, put the sun sign and the numbers together and look at their names. And I started looking at like my family's names and I realized in my grandmother's name that my grandfather's name was hiding in her name, her maiden name, and that she would marry him. And I'm like, oh my God, this is insane. <laughs> it just took me by the hand, like, here you go. And of course, I was in very, um, you know, in hindsight, um, I was in very intense uh, career changes in my life at the time due to cycles that were going on with me personally. And I was coming into my own of what I was really meant to be doing. And, and that happened, you know, close to 20 years ago now. I can't believe that, but that's exactly when it was. <laughs> okay. So, uh, we, um, yeah, we are getting been a fulfilling close. journey. That's all I could say. <laughs> okay. We're getting close to the end of our time, but I very quickly would like to touch on uh, one little subject of mercury in retrograde. It's something that, Anybody who I speak to who knows any, a little bit about astrology always says, oh, everything's, you know, we're going into Mercury and retrograde. When is that happening and why does it have such an impact on us? It has an impact on us because Mercury is an inner planet. And inner planet retrogrades affect us super strongly. And, and we touch base with why 2018 was so intense because we had a couple of uh, interplanet retrogrades that were really intense and all intertwined with eclipses and and so that's where the upsets were. Um, but what I teach and consult with people is that the the retrogrades are there for a reason, and astrology is 
astrology's timing is, is sets things up for a reason. We are meant to reflect. And when you look at retrogrades, you have to think it's a cycle of reflection, and I need to slow it down in this area of my life. I need to take a look at what already exists. I need to be mindful about planting for the future when I'm not supposed to be because I'm probably not going to get a really good crop later on. So if we honor the retrograde for what it is asking us to specifically do, we don't have to fight it, and then we don't have to fear it. I so got fed up watching and got very aggravated watching people fight against Mercury retrograde whenever it shows up because it's not meant to be resisted. <laughs> you have to kind of just deal with it um, in a way that you embrace what it wants you to do. And if you do that, it's a rewarding passage instead of one that is like just riddled in frustration. So the first one we have this year is going to be March 5th through the 28th. It's going to backtrack in Pisces. And I have kind of coined the theme of this one is it's going to shake off all the 2018 residue because we all have a little lingering residue from all that work we did in 18, and March is gonna be the clearance factor. We're gonna get it out of our space. So if we honor that and kind of take our silent time, and there's a good lexagram for you, the only way you can listen to anything in life is to be silent. They're the same letters just rearranged. It's a fun one. Um, okay, we wanna take a lot of silent time in March, and you know, go it there. Yes, yeah, I hate to interrupt, but we are just about out of time. So I just no, quickly, no problem. quickly ask, how can people find out more about you? Uh, SharitaStar.com. And uh, you can find me on Instagram, on Facebook, and Twitter. Those are my big three social media um, handles. So Sharita Star, SharitaStar.com. And um, reach out. I have a mailing list. Join the Start Tribe. I always keep you well informed of what's going on for all of your timings, everything, tips and tools. Oh, great. Well, Sharita, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, we've been talking with astrologer and numerologist Sharita Starr. I'm Debbie Specter weissman I hope you tune in next time. And until then, sweet dreams, everybody. You've been listening to Dream Power Radio with your host, Debbie Specter weissman For more information on Debbie or to sign up for her newsletter, go to dreampowerradio.com. This has been Dream Power Radio on the amazing Women and Men of Power Network, the world's leading positive programming network, powered by Raven International.